It's only four and a half hours drive, guys. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and according to Maverick, 120, 130 k <laughs> uh, It's four and a half hours. <laughs>Welcome to Hospitality Asia channel on Hapa TV. I'm Jennifer Ong. We're here today with Mr. Maverick Lowe, General Manager of Four Points by Sheraton Desaru. And guess what? He took a four and a half hours drive all the way from Desaru to Hapa TV. <laughs> so we're going to get the real story out of Maverick. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Maverick, to Hapa TV. Thank you. Thank you for making time and driving all the way from the Saru. What, four and a half hours? Yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing. This shows passion and commitment. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Isn't that's it? Right. Yes. Okay, so tell us, when did Four Points uh, by Sheraton Desaru open? Um, we opened last year, November 18, 2021. Why do you guys open hotel during <laughs> pandemic? <laughs> you know, you have hotel shutting down and you have guys like that opening up. <laughs> yeah, so I think so, um, it, it has been a tremendous journey. So going back to the question of be, why we open, because Marriott International is always striving to grow within the region. Mm -hmm. um, we felt that uh, our presence in Desaru was, uh, was going to be great because Westin is already there mm -hmm. as part of our sister property. So we felt that maybe Four Points will bring up a, another, uh, another option mm. for a different batch of travelers. Mm. So uh, hence, that's why we felt that it, it, there was a market demand for that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, well, you know, we had a lockdown on, in March 2020, right? So, and the hotel was open about a year ago. So when did the pre-opening team start? When did you start, uh, you know, forming the team and getting everyone ready? Yes. So um, I, I came on board in January 2021, so mm. uh, almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my whole team came on board in May 2021. So mm. we, had, we had the first lot of management team right. uh, coming on board in May and then the rest of them coming month on month. Progressively. Yeah, progressively. Okay. And how is it like? I mean, how is it like <laughs> <laughs> setting up a team and, you know, in between the lockdowns and, and you know, this is unprecedented. Pre unprecedented yeah. uh, and you know it, to have a new team coming up you know I think it I mean it, it must have been challenging <laughs> yes it was it was there were lots of ups and downs mm -hmm. uh, especially in between when the government was announcing a full lockdown mm. there was the emergency announcement so um, we had to stay home we had to work from home but um, we worked it out mm. at the end um, well, as a team mm. uh, we utilized zoom uh, teams to work things out to ensure that we are on track of opening. So um, things were along the way very well, uh, a little bit bumped along the way, but I think it was great. It yeah. turned out great at the end. Yeah, you know, I tell you, you you guys, you guys are really resilient, you know. <laughs> Hoteliers, you know, hospitality, captains, leaders, I'm, I'm just, you know, kudos, really salute. And, and that brings me to really congratulate you and, of course, congratulate Four Points by Sheraton Desaru for being nominated as a nominee for the Hapa Awards Malaysia Series 2022-2023. Thank and, you. you know, of course, it's like wh how not to nominate a hotel like that, you know, so <laughs> being so resilient. So let's talk about the hotel. Yeah, yes. Let's tell us more about the hotel, about Four Points. Yeah, by sure. Sheraton Desire. Um, we have 311 rooms in total. Um, we have three categories, mm -hmm. uh, a deluxe, premium, and a family room. Oh. So I think it's one of uh, the first of its kind mm -hmm. um, in Malaysia. Uh, we have our own uh, tipi tents within the family rooms, 14 of them. Uh, they're very high demand, especially in holiday seasons. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get them by a lot. Uh, we've got two ballrooms, one grand ballroom oh. and a junior ballroom. So the grand ballroom sits up to 500 packs uh, and the junior ballroom up to 250. Mm. 
Mm. We've got our all-day dining called The Mash. Mm -hmm. um, it is a new concept for Four Points by Sheraton Desaru. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first of its kind in Asia Pacific. So if you have not visited uh, the property, do come, mm. uh, taste yes. it out. It's really great. It's really exciting, like um, the culinary aspect of it. Um, mm. It's what, what, can, Why do you say it's first of a kind? What's, um, really, what's really different? What's we, really unique about it? This was born in the midst of the pandem uh, pandemic. So um, it's something that was untried before. Um, we were moving away from very uh, classic bar traditional. style traditional yeah. restaurants. We want to get. Uh, we we want to reinvigorate uh, the space, giving a, a new sense of uh, character mm. uh, within within the hotel. Um, if you walk into traditional hotels, you you have that solid feel. You don't. You feel that that that's the bar. That's the very masculine. Mm. But if you come into the mesh, um, it's like an um, inter inter strands of wiring that's connected. Oh. space so wow. it's really good so if you if you look into our mesh bar and the lounge and the restaurant it's all mm. in a connected area okay. together with our lobby so i see it's in one okay. one massive space so right. you you can sort of like enjoy mm. a cup of coffee while mm. you're working but at the same time you hear the hustle and bustle of the lobby mm. you get the the breakfast smells um you get the, oh, the nice. pastries being baked at the restaurant so you get that, really open yeah, concept. Yeah, really open concept. Yes, correct. Oh, so you, you don't nice. separate the areas. So okay. that, that's really something new. That's really, really nice. Cool. Oh, okay. So, and uh, let's come to the room. So you've got three categories of the room, right? And how many of the family rooms do you have? And uh, uh, we have how many suites? Uh, we don't have suites, unfortunately, as a Four Points brand, mm. but we do have 14 family rooms. Mm -hmm. um, out of the 14, we have 140 plus kings and 160 plus twins, so uh, twin rooms. So that's how we categorize them. Now, what about the rooms, Mary? You know, nowadays people talk about contactless, right? Yeah. Being tacky, um, you know, and and a lot of digital stuff. How how is the, how are the rooms there in the Four Points? My shirt is the sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, a, that's actually an interesting point because when we first opened, we, we felt that maybe, we thought, we didn't feel, but we thought that um, customers were more, um, were more into contactless journey mm. throughout the experience within the hotel. But um, we tested it for six months and we had QR codes everywhere. Yeah. In, okay. a, in the room, uh, yeah, you can order in-room dining via right. QR codes. You can um, view our brochures via QR mm. codes. But after six months, mm. we feel that customers were, go were, were going, were shifting back towards the traditional way of feeling it. Like ah. they want to have in-room dining menus mm. on hand. They mm. want to have interactions with with our with our associates. I think that's something that hospitality would never change. I think that's why the re that, that's one of the reasons why we're there for in mm. hospitality. I think there's a lot of talk about how hospitality is shifting, it, it, um, adding technology into the services, but mm. I think that's hospitality. We The, the human aspects of it mm. will never go away because mm. you still need interaction within, within, between guests. Well, yeah, that, so, so that's, that's a really interesting um, topic in hospitality, right? So we know that everyone is moving towards digital transformation uh, in, in, in many, many different businesses. But the question is always about hospitality. Like, like you say, right, hospitality is about the personal touches, yeah? The, the, um, the personalised service, yeah? And how do you actually digitalize that? You can't really go digital on that basis. Um, but then again, how is it that people are talking about, oh, you know, everybody needs to move into the digital era. Do you think hospitality industry will eventually move really uh, major, well, you know, not 100%, not, not you still need people, but do you think a high chance of it really moving towards the digital era? Um, I don't think we will move fully digital, um, <laughs> but what, I believe that we will work in sync with the digital trends. Mm. We will work together with whatever digital aspects there is uh, within the market that would help us make our work easier. Mm. So, for example, um, uh, 
back then you were doing a lots of um, reservations via like manual sheets. You write yeah. down a lot. Now yeah. we're moving towards everything on PC. Mm. That's a very simple uh, way of uh, putting digital aspect into hospitality. Mm. But uh, moving forward, mm. I guess it's how we are using tech mm. in service, how we do things faster because uh, things are on our hands these days. Yeah. It's really quick. We want information fast, fast, yes. fast. Yes. Uh, service in that hand, if if we don't adapt and if we don't change, um, mm. that will be a challenge for us. Mm. Hence why we need technology to assist mm. us to make things go faster. Mm. Um, the impact of it, I guess, comes with the engagement with yeah. the guests. So that, yeah. that's a very strong point. Um, mm. If you're doing things too fast, you lose that engagement. Mm. You don't have that service sense anymore. You mm. lose that part. But if you are trained to think that engagement is very vital, it's important mm. to a guest journey, mm. then it will help. It will go in sync. I think so. It's striking the balance, yes, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. I mean, the guest, every guest wants things fast and, you know, efficient. And like you say, nowadays, you know, with digital, yes. <laughs> you know, it, being in a digital world, we want things like that, you know, yes. on the spot. Correct. So, so you're right. I think, you know, definitely we need to have some form of digital presence in hospitality. Correct. But at the same time, you want that interaction, you want that personalized service. That's so right. it's really... Balancing it and yes. making sure that it supports each other. Correct. Right. So how? Okay. And on that on that note, how is Four Points by Sheraton Desire uh, moving forward in 2023 in staying relevant in providing you know great customer service but at the same time efficiency, <laughs> you know, uh, without losing that personal touch? I think um, what every hotel is uh, what what every hotel is doing right now in the market. Um, has shown that we we have adapted really well with technology advancements over the years. Um, with the pandemic, that that was actually a new learning curve for us because prior to the pandemic, we had already ideas of robots and turn yeah. auto self check ins and things like that. So, um, making ourselves relevant is that we we have to make sure that that level of service stays mm. at, at that point. We do not allow it to drop. Mm. Uh, from the moment you allow your standards to drop mm. and your service standards to drop, that's mm. where it goes a little bit. Mm. Mm. So, um, But how do you maintain it? Um, just ensuring that we motivate, we encourage and train our staff, our associates to actually understand why are we there in the first mm. place? Why are mm. we in, in the hospitality industry? We're in a service mm. sector. So we have to ensure that every single one of them who comes through the door who wants to work with us, who wants to build a career journey with us, understands that simple aspect. So um, training is one of the factors that we have to let let the team know mm. and it will go on from there. From there. Yeah. But what about talent? Do you have an issue with talent? I mean, now hospitality are short of... Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're short of talent. We're short of, you know, what we call the superheroes. Um, <laughs> How do you how do you manage that to ensure that you know the the service excellence, the customer journey, the guest experience isn't compromised? I think um, talent issues. I think it's it's happening all around the world because mm. um, uh, uh, I've I've got mates of mine who works in Australia. So I've worked in Australia for almost almost ten over years and they're facing the same issues as mm. us. So at, at the beginning at the beginning I thought it was just us. Uh -huh. But then understanding that Singapore Singapore is actually facing the same thing, US is facing the same thing. I think it's a global issue. Mm. Um, we've been in a lockdown in a in a very tough situation over the past two years. So I think it's more about re acclimatizing mm. I would say like trying to understand where we stand before and how we want to mm. move forward as a team yeah. um, as hoteliers I think that's where uh, that's where talent will come back mm. it only take time 
but it won't it won't it won't be solved immediately yeah. it'll take some time it's a progressive thing yes isn't progressive it? thing yeah. correct so i think one of the first steps that all of the hotel every single um, hotel um, hotelier has been doing is to trying to get some foreign labels in mm. and then the more foreign labels we get in but then <laughs> we lose our local talent to singapore for yes. example <laughs> they're just right at our doorsteps so we train them hard enough like as i said before we're training and training and training they understand the service levels and then mm. they start going across the border yeah. so um, I think it will be a constant challenge yeah. um, it will not be something that will just stay for like three months that the problem will only stay for three but I think it will be ongoing mm. Um, mm. until we come to a point where we get that attraction from the mm. next generation that they mm. want to work with us mm. yeah they yeah, want to come to hotels again they get interested yeah. in the grandeur of the hotels so yeah, yeah. That's right. What, so, what what's the the, the DNA of uh, Four Points by Sheridan Desario? What's <laughs> the DNA, you know, of the hotel? What's the culture like? Okay, so um, at Four Points by Sheridan Desaru, so we are mostly we we work on honest and uncomplicated service. So uh, honest and uncomplicated. uncomplicated. Yes. Correct. That is interesting. Never heard of that yes. sort of a concept. Okay. So, Tell us more about that. So, honest being uh, not too fancy, not too overcomplicated, mm -hmm. uh, uh, straightforward, and for independent travelers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, people like for ourselves, like my, my age, maybe yours as well, like who <laughs> doesn't want to have too much fancy stuff. Yeah. But I, I don't know, because we, we, in Marriott, we have 33 brands, so we are very distinctive in how we categorize ourselves. Mm -hmm. So four points are more towards the, the uncomplicated service. So we, we don't want to go too uncomplicated. Our service is very straightforward. Mm. You want a coffee, we grab you a coffee mm. straight away. You want eggs, um, well done eggs, we get you well done eggs yeah. straight away. That's not like, hey, we want, do you want this? Do you want that? Yeah. Do you want that? So it, it's not so So basically just giving the customers and guests what yes. they want, yes, right? Yes, correct. And, and, and Meeting it, their expectations, yeah. ensuring that um, uh, they're, they're happy throughout their stay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So let's talk about guest experience. I mean, you know, as you know, hospitality is all about the customer journey, right? Yes. Guest journey and guest experience. Um, with now you've got this, you know, uh, travel revenge or whatever they call it, you know, people are expecting more. Um, how will your hotel come up with like different unique experiences to meet these expectations of guests? You know, what are they looking for actually? What, what do these guests want? <laughs> well, when we first opened, we, we actually had quite a number of people uh, coming through our doors just wanting to get away. Mm. So they were not expecting a lot, but mm. um, they just want their basic food on the table and hungry, food on the table for me, clean bed, clean room, right. hot shower, right. TV that works, everything, just the basics. Um, I think over time, mm. it gradually grew faster. The, 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 the expectations were different and different each time. Mm. Came Chinese New Year, mm. the clientele were different. Mm. Came Raya, clientele were different, mm. demands were different, expectations different again. What, what, what sort of things were different? I mean, like you say, that it's, it's, you know, the basic needs are met, yes. right? The basic needs are, are, are delivered, yeah. right? So what else, what is the, the additional expectations? What exactly do they, do they want more than, like you say, you know, the hot shower and the yes. food on the table and yes. clean bed and clean room? And, <laughs> yeah, what else do they want? I think it's more of um, expectations of when I arrive, I'm paying that much do I get a little bit more in return? Okay. So apart from just paying for just a room. Right, so this, the, the extra, the yes, extra the, the mile, little, the extra is a little correct, bit extra. A little okay. bit extra. So each time is different because um, going back to the point where the borders was first open, mm. um, we did not expect the demand to be that high. Mm. So we had no choice but to increase rates based on demands. Right. So we had to see when the demand kicks in, we we slow we gradually go by market like demand versus uh, mm, supply. supply. Mm. So uh, we felt that service basic service was insufficient to mm. cover the basic the 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 the, 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 the rates that we were charging. So right. hence we had to look into different things, right. amenities wise. How can right. we elevate 
So um, just add value yeah, to correct. what, yeah, and, and maintain the rate there, but adding value correct. to what's what's being provided. Correct. Okay. So, so what if, were the extras? Yes. From your job? So. We were doing little touches, uh, personalized gifts for mm. um, our guests who are staying with us, for example, who's coming for a birthday celebration. Mm. We were not doing the simple cake on a small little cake on a plate, mm. and just a small little a bottle of water, which is put in a room, but mm. we're doing like balloons and stuff. So just making sure that we're going above and beyond our basic duties to ensure that the guest's journey is great. Mm. So and always giving more yes, than what correct. they expect. More and more and more. Yeah. So um, then, when they're happy, they'll always come back. Mm. So at the same time, we have to make sure we look after our staff as well, associates. Because mm. when we look after our associates, they look after our guests. Yes, and when they look absolutely. after our guests, they'll always return and return and return. Mm. And this is a Marriott core principle. So it's a vision that Mr. Marriott has passed down from mm -hmm. generations to generations and mm. this is where we live in right now so we we live and breathe this culture nice so, yeah. beautiful nice nice so okay so to the audience what can they expect uh, <laughs> from four points by sheraton desire in 2023 well, you'll expect this, um, our great service, great hospitality, mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure. Um, you'll also expect our warm uh, service that we're there for. Um, you'll ensure, you'll, you'll also have all your basic necessities being covered. So um, don't worry, come, it's a home away from home. <laughs> Home away nice. from home, so you're you're gonna enjoy yourself uh, going down to the the Saru. So it's a it's a new place. It's developing, mm -hmm. so you're gonna have a great time next nice, year. Nice, nice, and it's only four and a half hours drive, guys. <laughs> 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 you know, and and according to Maverick, 120, 130 k. Uh, <laughs> it's four and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go above the speed limits. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So thank you very much, Maverick, for you know being thank here you. Uh, in Hapa TV and uh, for sharing you know so really really amazing. This is amazing product, you know. And and even though it's a year old, I believe many of us have not been. I've not been to Four Points by Shanta Desario, and you know I love the fact that uh, you say it's very uncomplicated service. It's honest service, and it's home away from home. Mm. So those of you who are just looking for, you know, just a nice big away, get away, you know, and uh, go look for Maverick. <laughs> home you. away from home. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. Um, thank and you. congratulations again for being nominated for the HAPA Awards. And uh, definitely we'll see you in the Saru. Yes. As well as on the red carpet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, definitely we'll catch you at all our future episodes on HAPA TV Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram soon. See you then. Take care.